Alright, September 27th. Uh, got a southwest wind forecast tonight, so I'm going to head down to Maryland. There's a uh, oak flat that last time I was in there, saw a whole bunch of dough. Missed the dough, unfortunately. And uh, acorns were dropping like crazy, so I feel pretty good about the. I'm going to shift my tree tonight a little bit. Should help me out with the wind. Last time it was swirling real bad, and they were real spooky the whole time I was in there. So, going to head down here get set up uh, not too bad of a walk today on this this spot but you know still it's warm it's uh 76 right now according to my truck here in the shade so I want to give myself a couple extra minutes to get in there and uh, do my best not to break a sweat uh, it's gonna be a little hard to do with uh, as warm as it is but we'll head down here you know sit in the stand for a couple hours and Hopefully, finally, uh, finally turn some arrows red and fill a few tags. So, feel pretty good about tonight, though. Uh, I think Jason's going to meet me down here. He's going to hunt a different part of the property. So, uh, hopefully, between the two of us, we can we can let some arrows fly and uh, fill some tags. Probably about 150, 200 yards from where I'm going to be hunting tonight. And, Like seeing lots of acorns on the ground. I was hoping I wouldn't see them until I got a little closer to my spot, but this whole ridge is nothing but oaks. So I'm okay with that. Alright. Last time I was in here, last time I was in here this deer came over the top of this ridge and they kind of caught my wind as they crossed that. I was set up right about there at one of them trees at the top of the hill. And they kept catching my wind. So I'm gonna go right up on this side so that they're not gonna see me or wind me climbing this hill. And uh, you know, fortunately the tree that uh, I picked out last time, they're probably gonna be able to see me. So I gotta just take my time, sneak up there. Pretty sure it's that guy right there. But southwest wind, it's, it's coming across like this. So anything bedded on that thick hilltop, never gonna know I'm here. I'm hoping they drop right down to me. Oh, well, we're going back in the woods again here. It's actually a little later than I hoped. I drove home from the eastern shore. My thoughts were to come down here to this piece of public in northern Maryland, a little closer to home. Well, I ended up falling asleep. This is what happens when you don't sleep enough. And um, I woke up. About 45 minutes later than I wanted to, but that's okay. We're here, hiking in. Uh, this is an oak ridge. Actually, Mitch is hunting this oak ridge right now. He's probably about 300 yards from me right now, and um, I don't want to cramp him. So I know you're going to come to this oak ridge, but I'm thinking about pulling back a little bit, getting to some areas, and make it overlooked, maybe a little bit. So I'm going to. Um, go a little deeper in the public. So they show us scouting, I kind of found this area that intrigues me and I'm gonna try it out today. The spot's pretty cool. Um, there's a couple um, transition lines come together right there. Um, a pretty hard transition from like a, an almost an overgrown field to a hardwood edge. And then within that hardwood, it's, um, it's, there's some open patches and then there's some uh, kind of thick patches of pawpaw and um, beech trees. And those thick patches within the hardwoods also do some kind of a uh, channeling and uh, steering of the deer activity um, and then all that tied together um, you know makes for a pretty decent looking spot hopefully it's productive so see you in a bit well I think it was I hoped that tree was covered in landing flies and then that means it's covered in bees and everything else plus those landing flies poop out like sticky stuff it was dripping down on me so I just got hit on by a bug so Cover scent, check. Now I'm gonna go to a different spot. I'm not gonna sit there and get pooed on, you know? Alright, I gotta relocate it. I gotta stand up, put it up here, and hopefully the next two hours will be good.
I just smashed her. <laughs> I guess the uh, the cover scent worked. The uh, lantern fly poop. <laughs> it came right into 15 yards. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm jacked up. I hope I got that shot on film. I think I did. I'll check it out. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Did you? Did you? Did you? Yeah, let's find out. All right, I'm in and set up. Just got done hanging the stand and uh, pulled my bow and everything up. Wind still feels pretty good. It's coming southwest. Uh, just as I crested this hill, I saw uh, two deer saw me at the same time I saw them. So they, uh, they never blew. They didn't even run. They just didn't even fly or anything. They just eased off up into this thick stuff. They were already out in these. These oaks feeding. Uh, like I said, they never blew or really spooked or anything. So I'm hoping they they come on back. I'm pretty sure she has my wind right now. It's a little bit more west than southwest right now. Came down just like you were supposed to. I was hoping they'd walk right through here. Whew. Well, went to watch that shot back from my camera, and uh, unfortunately for uh, all of you guys watching, I recorded the tree rather than the deer. So, a little bummed about that. And my, uh, apparently my one battery, uh, isn't good on my Tacticam because a brand new battery I charged it before I left the house and it never turned on. The one over my shoulder turned on but one on my bow and it never turned on and then uh, 
I recorded this tree. I just should have let that deer step another step or two and she would have been in a frame for you. So that's a good looking arrow. I'm gonna start tracking. She went, she ran up this way. So once I start finding blood, then I'll uh, show you guys what we're following. See some blood there. She ran right up through here. This, uh, where the sunlight's coming and hitting it, making it real hard to pick it up. Fouled it a little ways. And, uh, I mean, she probably only went 35 yards, 40 yards. So I guess when you, you don't need a good blood trail when they fall over right where you last hurt them. All right, guys. Like I said, apologize for uh, for not getting her on camera and frame. I even waited for you to try to make sure she was in uh, in frame and uh, give you guys uh, some good entertainment. But uh, unfortunately, uh, she wasn't. But. Uh, like I said, this was a southwest wind tonight, <clears throat> and uh, this oak, oak flat here. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I was wrestling around with her to get her and get her set up here. Uh, but southwest wind tonight, she came in. She came in from my west and uh, fed right on in like I thought they would. Uh, right in front of me. That's where most of the trails are. There's two two pretty heavy trails uh, south of me, so. You know, any kind of south winds, I'm usually pretty good here. All right, I just watched the footage. I don't really like the angle. Um, I didn't realize that, kind of the heat of the moment, my mistake, but she was pretty much broadside when I drill. But when I bleeded the stopper, yeah. she kind of turned her front end toward me. Let me move a quarter and two shot. I hit her pretty good going in, but I think because the quarter and two, might be long in liver or something and I'm gonna get down and check this arrow so we'll see what's up. Here's the arrow. Looks good. Doesn't stink. What we got? Just got Mitch is uh, deer back to the truck. After we uh, reviewed the footage of my deer and uh, looked at the arrow, it, it blood was it was covered in blood, but it was just a little darker color blood, so possibly one lung and liver. So we opted to back out and just wait till morning. I, liver hits can be so finicky. I'm just worried about bumping her across this hillside, and there's a pretty big body of water out further. And I don't want her to jump in that either. So we backed out. So it's get down pretty chilly tonight, uh, so come back first thing in the morning and hopefully find her. Fortunately, we couldn't film them together for the, we doubled up, but uh, we couldn't film them together, but we'll still have, hopefully have closure in the morning. Um, but Mitch made a great shot, and uh, he's got meat going home with him, so that's cool. It was a great night in the woods. Well, good morning. Here we are, it's uh, the morning after. Um, I'm going to just help get my kids ready for school. They're heading for the bus, so I'm going to drink some coffee as I drive to Maryland and hopefully find this doe. I'm hopeful the shot looks good. I watched it on camera again. It looks, she's definitely dead. It's a matter of uh, how far she went. I did try to find blood for about 30, 40 yards from where I hit, but I was having a hard time. The area, it's all like dirt. There's no leaves on the ground right now, so it was a hard time finding blood. Um, plus it was getting dark, um, but I looked at the hit, and based on the hit in the air, I decided just not even push any further than that 40 yards or so and just backed out. So I'm going to go in there and hopefully find her. All right, I just pushed through this Paul Paul's mother stick stuff. I'm about 120 yards from the tree. We stopped maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 yards back there last night, but I kind of covered this little rise here. Look what I see. There she is. Yes. I hate that, like having to wait overnight. But it really is the way to do it. I just, honestly, I kind of came out about 80 yards and started trying to pick up blood on the different deer trails. 
and I kind of went up the hill once, didn't see blood. When I hooked, went out maybe 30 yards further down, looked for blood, didn't see it on the trails there. And then on my route back up that second time coming back up, this is where she's at. So I kind of was doing a mix between a grid search and a blood search at about maybe the 80 to 100 yard mark. And like I said, she's probably 125, 150 yards from the tree. All right, everyone, here she is. Here's the uh, my third Maryland doe for this year. Um, a real pretty, real pretty doe. We got, um, you can see from the shot, the entry hole is pretty good, but the exit is back. Um, as I said earlier, I gave her overnight, which makes for a long sleep this night, but I'm glad I did it. Um, looking back, I mean, I should have done a better job, you know, in the heat of the moment when I bleeded her stop, mm -hmm. took an extra second, just looked at her body position. If I would have seen her quartering um, like she was, I would, e would either have tucked it real tight to that front leg or I would have maybe even just waited till she moved a little bit and got in better position. But, uh, you know, hindsight's always 20-20, and unfortunately, um, you know, with, uh, with a camera, you can look back and you really see, you know, your mistake. Um, although mistake, no, I made a mistake. Um, I did the right thing last night and backed out. Mitch and I talked it over when he came to meet me. He was really um, excited. He had just shot his deer, and we were pumped about it doubling up. Uh, so we did double up. He killed a doe, and I killed a doe on the same night. We were only about 200 or so yards apart, which is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't recover them on the same day. But here we are. We got the deer.